with Sunday morning alive uh, here with Abundant Life Sanctuary. We're so glad you've joined us. So glad that you've taken the time out to be with us here this morning. It's an opportunity to be in the presence of God and the presence of others. Although we're physically separated, we're united in spirit today. And for that, we are so very, very grateful. We want you to know that you're welcome, guests, friends, family. We're praying that God is going to make a difference in your life and leave you better than we found you this morning. We want to take the time to just share a couple of things with you. One is that we're going through a series this year called Back to Basics, the basics of life, uh, the basics of faith, and uh, the basics of family. So there's some great opportunities to learn about what God has for us out of his word. And we're glad that you joined us for that. It's interesting, I was walking this week uh, upstairs in the church and went by a classroom and we were reminded of one of the basic tenets of who we are and what we do. The kids reminded us that everyone's welcome, nobody's perfect, and anything is possible. And I believe that today, I am convinced that absolutely anything is possible. Before we pray this morning, let me just share a couple things with you. One is, there's a man that we've been praying for. He's been on our prayer list for several weeks. He's had some uh, ups and downs both in his fight with multiple myeloma. And he's been at MD Anderson doing a clinical trial. And we got word this week that uh, of the fact that he's only one of four people and the three other persons have not done well in this trial. However, the doctors have declared uh, him a complete success and have said that he is in complete remission from the cancer that he has fought. And as a result, he will have to have no follow-up treatment. I, I just believe anything is possible. And we're so grateful for that. One other little reminder I'd like to share with you this week is the fact that uh, we've been sharing with the community, we've been sharing with families, people in the church, all the good things that God has in store for us and the requirements that he has. You know, Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. It's a process. Well, there's a, a, a lady who's been watching and we're so grateful her mother's been praying for her and uh, believing that God's gonna do some things in her life and would you believe that this week she went to a parking lot service, an outdoor service on the parking lot of a church up in Hill Street, Texas. A, a speaker was there speaking and they offered the opportunity to be baptized in the name of Jesus. And although she had been born of the spirit as a child, she was born of the water again and uh, had just a whole new experience and a whole new opportunity to know God in a brand new way. So we're excited about that. We're excited about the things that are happening. So as we pray this morning for these needs, for the, our country, for our leader, leaders, uh, we want to um, believe in faith that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we would ask or think anything is possible. Why? Because Jesus is here where two or three are gathered in his name, he said, there I am in the midst of them. So I ask that you would join with me this morning. Let's take some time out and just ask for God's blessings on this service and also blessings on his people. Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you for the opportunity to be once again in your presence. As we gather in your name, we know you are in our midst. As we magnify your name, we know you inhabit praises of your people. Every person that we are praying for, remembering especially in our comments feed, on our prayer list, dear God, those that we're remembering in our government, around the world, as a nation. We ask that you would open our minds and hearts and spirits to you as never before and bring a great, great revival to this land as we humble ourselves and seek your face. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you again so much for being with us. I want to remind you that our series is not forgotten, How to Survive Anything. That is still with us, and we had planned on talking about living with purpose this week. We put that off 
for just uh, probably a week or so, and uh, something came to me this week that was just Friday. The Lord began to speak to my heart, and I could not escape this. I felt a great urgency to share it with you. And so I want to take us today on a journey back to the first century, the first century ministry of Jesus Christ. He's wrapping up his three and a half years of ministry and his 33 years here on earth. And he gathers his closest. He gathers his disciples who have witnessed his resurrection as we studied just a couple of weeks ago. And he takes them to the hillside and he tells them, I want you to go and tarry at Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. He's got a special mission and a special purpose, but he's got a special experience for them before that they start out in this journey. I wanna want you to watch and see what happens as they follow his commandment and go back to Jerusalem to tarry for that power from on high. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Wake up, all of you. Mm. Wake, mm -hmm. come. What are we doing? We're praying. Now we can leave this place. Now spread his word. Master. That experience was an experience that baffled many on the streets of Jerusalem that day. In fact, their question was when they saw these apostles coming out onto their city streets, what meaneth this? What is this? And people today are still asking the same question, what meaneth this? It's baffled generations for centuries, although it has stayed with us, the promise has not left 
Uh, so we want to take a look at that today and talk about that experience. Many people have wondered, and this is your opportunity to get a little closer look at this mystery that so many have tried to figure out. I want you to turn with me to Acts, the 11th chapter. Acts is the phone book. It's the yellow pages, as you would of the early church. And I want us to go to Acts, the 11th chapter, and take a look and see what was happening in this early church and how they were relating the gospel now that they had this baptism of his spirit. Verse 13 of chapter 11 says, and he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house which stood and said unto him, send men to Joppa and call for Simon whose surname is Peter. These were believers, these were devout men. These were persons who were followers of Jesus there was more to the story, and they're calling for Peter to give them a little explanation, a little mystery to be figured out and solved by the apostle. Peter, verse 14, says, Who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved? This is Peter speaking, verse 15, And as I begin to speak, he was in the middle of his message, Something happened that interrupted his message. The Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. Peter said the same way it happened here today is the same thing that happened in that Acts 2 experience in that upper room, verse 16. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said John indeed baptized with water. That was the first baptism. John baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. That's the second baptism. Verse 17 says, For as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us. This is Peter talking. Who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? I want to take just a few minutes and talk to you today about the second baptism. Many, many people in Christian Newman across the world are familiar with the first baptism, but I just would like to share and maybe shed a little more light on what the Bible may refer to as the second baptism. We're going to call it that today. So I, I want to begin with a bit of trivia for you. Uh, let's imagine that we were uh, sitting around the table playing Trivial Pursuit or uh, who wants to be a millionaire? And the question came up, how many persons did Jesus baptize in water? And the four choices would be zero, A, B, 15, C, 150, or D, did he baptize 15,000 persons in water? Uh, you might call a friend, you might ask for a 50-50, but I'm going to give you the answer because it's found in the Word of God. Turn with me to John 4, and you're going to find exactly how many because if you picked zero, you are correct. You may be a little shocked by this, but if you, if you picked a zero, you uh, just won a million dollars. Bless you. Let's turn to John 4. We're going to find out why. John 4 and 1 when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, uh-oh, he baptized, but look, in parentheses, verse two, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples. This was one task that Jesus fully delegated to his disciples. We can infer from this verse, that in fact, in water, Jesus did not baptize one Person. This has always been a bit of a curiosity and a mystery, the fact that although Jesus advocated, he said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, that Jesus would not actually reach out and perform a baptism himself. Uh, it's interesting that he gave his disciples that, that John couldn't give it, the disciples couldn't give it, uh, there was only one person who could perform this second special baptism. In Matthew 3, we find John the Baptist doing what he was called to do, baptizing people 
in the Jordan River, but he puts a disclaimer on what he's doing. And he delineates the two baptisms. In verse 11, he says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you, but it's not gonna be a water baptism. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. There were two distinct baptisms. And the second baptism, there was only one person, the name of Jesus. Every knee's gonna bow, every tongue is gonna confess that he is Lord. And he was given the authority to make this baptism. Jesus said, it's expedient that I go away. This scene we're watching of these disciples. And he said, if I don't go away, the comforter cannot come to you. It's interesting that Jesus could not be in two places evidently at one time. He had to go and be glorified so that the glory could come down. Matthew 3 and 13. Then Jesus comes to Galilee. We're going to go back in time just a little bit into this baptism of John, unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou unto me. And Jesus said to him, Suffer it be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill righteousness. Then he suffered him. What kind of baptism was Jesus going to baptize with? John had already answered the question in verse 11. I indeed, and he's baptizing literally the Lord of glory, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. There's two baptisms. There's a first baptism and then there is a second baptism. Oh, I want the baptism of fire. The Bible says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I want that baptism today. And it's interesting that Peter gave a two-baptism formula when he walked out of the upper room, that experience, onto the streets of Jerusalem in Acts, the second chapter, the Jews in Acts, the second chapter, ask another question. After they said, what meaneth this? They said, what must we do or what shall we do? It's interesting that Jesus uh, had the second baptism. It was what the apostle Peter gave them in the instructions that he gave them. And it mirrors with those instructions for Peter in the second chapter of Acts in the 38th verse said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. That was definitely the first baptism. But he added to it a second baptism. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For this promise is unto you and to your children to all them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. He tagged a second baptism onto the first baptism. It wasn't a water baptism. It wasn't a baptism by man. It was a spiritual baptism, and it was a baptism of the, the Spirit of Jesus Christ himself. It's interesting if you if you back up just a little further, you'll see Jesus was talking to a very religious man in John 3 who was very familiar with the ritual bathing or the cleansing ritual that the Jews knew as the mikvah. It was uh, something that, that was done on more than one occasion where they washed themselves to cleanse themselves of uncleanness. So in John 3 and 5, when Jesus talks to this man and shares this man with this man who's come to him by night and says, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. It baffles him because the easy part of that was he was very familiar with the immersion in water. He was very familiar with a baptism by water. That was not foreign to him or his culture. 
at all. But when Jesus said, you must be born of the Spirit, or there's a second baptism, there's a second flooding and overflowing of your body and mind and soul and spirit. And Nicodemus says, whoa, Lord, how, how can this be? And Jesus said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. This, this water baptism, yes, is, is a, a earthly baptism, but this heavenly baptism is from above. And he said, marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. And he goes on to describe the experience to him. And he, 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 as Jesus so many times, he uses an earthly parable to describe a heavenly principle. And he says in John 3 and 8, the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. It's interesting when Jesus said, you'll hear a sound. When someone's born of the Spirit, you'll hear a sound. In fact, if you go back to that word, that word in the original is phone, which means it could be, I'm gonna go ahead and give you, uh, we throw this on our screens. It means a sound, a tone. It can be like a musical instrument, but more often it's referenced to as a voice or the sound of uttered words or speech or language or a tongue. It's interesting that Isaiah said, with stammering lips and another tongue will I speak to this people. So phone is where we in English get the word phonics. Uh, hooked on phonics, uh, knowing your phonics, learning to read, learning to speak. Uh, it's where we get the word phone from because it's language. So even where there appears to be just the natural baptism, there is a supernatural sign of the voice. There's a supernatural sign that shows up. It's the second baptism. It's the baptism by fire. It's the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In Ephesians, it's interesting that even when we're speaking of baptism and it appears to be one, you get this spirit baptism thrown in with it. Ephesians 4 and 5 says, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all, and in you all. Look at the first half of that. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, right? But then we're going to find a description of the second baptism and what happened in that clip we saw in Acts the second chapter where the disciples were gathered in the upper room. And as they begin to pray, as they begin to seek, as they begin to tarry, suddenly there was a sound that came from heaven as of, there's that sound again, as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting in. Cloven tongues of fire appeared unto them and set upon each one. The Bible says they were all filled with the Spirit of God and began to speak in another language. And so we find that described here in verse 6. One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Do you remember Jesus telling his disciples, I am with you, but I'm going to live in you. He, it's the second baptism. And we witnessed that happening when Jesus said, go and tear ye at Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on us. So that's our prayer today. That's our desire today. That's what we're asking God to do is to, as we raise hearts and minds and spirits, as we begin to worship him, that God would inhabit the praises of his people and come and rest upon us and we would have that Acts 2 experience right here in 2020. God is still real. He's still here. He said, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when Peter got through giving, he said, that promise, that promise, this promise, the promise that you're seeing, this that's, that's heard and shed abroad in the streets of Jerusalem is unto you and your children and to all of them that are far off. That is us today. That's right where we're here. So we're asking God, let the glory of the Lord, let the, 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 the spirit of God, let the knowledge of God, let the knowledge of the glory of the Lord cover the earth, even as the waters cover the sea. He said that this gospel, this gospel would be preached in all the world, beginning first in Jerusalem and in Judea. So is the prayer being answered? Is that happening? 
Oh, we're seeing it all over. We, we've, we've seen it on uh, one-on-one. We've seen it in small groups. We've seen it in main sanctuary. I have been in stadiums where I have watched this happen. And today, before we leave you, I wanna, I wanna share with you in closing, we had a minister last week speak to us. He shared with us the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He, he shared with us the plan of salvation, repentance, baptism in his name, being filled with his spirit. But he's given the opportunity, not just to our church, he's given that opportunity to the whole world. I wanna take you back to 2002. This same minister was standing in front of thousands. Uh, I think it's been estimated close to 100,000 were in this service. And as he began to preach the word of God, and as the word of God is mixed with faith, and it always does, it begins to cause people to ask that same question in Acts 2, what must we do? And he began to give instructions on how to be baptized in the spirit of God, how to receive that Holy Ghost in feeling that beautiful experience that they experienced in Acts the second chapter. And as he began to preach, and as he began to sing, and as they began to allow the presence of God to work and move in their lives, something amazing happened in that crowd that day, and God began to come from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and fill all of the house. We ask that you would watch, listen, and pray along with them as they have this experience. Hallelujah means I give all of myself to you, God. Hallelujah, Malik. While you're shouting hallelujah with a loud voice, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you and you will begin to speak with other tongues. Hallelujah. I am ready to speak the word of faith. By the authority of the word of God. And by the power of the name Jesus. Jesus I command you now, receive ye the Holy Ghost.
We are experiencing one of the greatest outpourings of the Holy Ghost in the history of the Epistemic Church. Texas and as the preacher began to preach that night I began to feel something stir in my spirit I began to feel something draw me toward the altar that night and as I had already asked God to cleanse me of every sin I'd already been baptized in his spirit at a very young age I walked down to that altar that night and I, I bowed my head and just began to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with God I began to ask him to fill me with his spirit there was a beautiful understanding older gentleman that came to me and he began to talk me through the process of worshiping God, just opening my spirit to him. And something happened and I had that exact same experience where I was baptized with the spirit of God to overflow with the evidence of other tongues speaking in another language as the spirit of God gave the utterance. The apostle Peter said it correctly. This promise is unto you and to your children and all them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. I want to pray for you right now. I pray that the presence of God would come and be with you right there in your home. And if you have any questions, any desires to be know, uh, know more about being born of the water of the Spirit, would you contact us? And let us know that we want to get in touch with you, send you some information. Let's pray together right now. Heavenly Father, we love you. Thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence, to experience what we've experienced today and see what we've seen today. I do ask that the knowledge of the glory, this beautiful experience that you have given us, would be spread across this world as we're open, as we're seeking, as we're hungering and thirsting after righteousness. You said they shall be filled. It would be within us a well springing up into everlasting life. I ask that you would feel that you would help, that you would strengthen, you would guide, and that righteousness, peace, and joy would be overflowing in our lives we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you Wednesday night at 730. We're looking forward to a great time in the Word and in the Spirit of God. Keep the main thing the main thing, and we'll see you then. God bless you.